Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Fuller and we're in the middle of our MetaSounds 101 tutorial series. This is part three. In this video, we are going to be talking about triggers, different kinds of triggers, how we can use triggers to do all sort of cool scripting to kind of help generate some AI music, some generative procedural music in the MetaSounds of the Unreal Engine 5. So let's jump in and check that out. All right, in our last two videos, we kind of did an introduction to MetaSounds and the Wave Player. In this video, we are gonna be talking about a super important feature uh, called triggers. We know that these inputs here are triggers and what these are do is what these are doing is we're triggering these meta sounds. So in our last video we didn't have anything uh, we left this untriggered so we're gonna just connect that to on finished. Now when we play this, it's gonna play the kick, then the hi-hat and then it's gonna end. And now our memory's freed up and the meta sound is dead. Now let's talk about triggers. Uh, this is a really powerful feature, okay? So let's get rid of this for now. We're gonna unhook this. We are going to use a trigger repeat instead of a loop, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull off this play node and we're gonna type trigger. And you can see all these awesome types of triggers that we can get which are pretty powerful. We're going to just go down here. Let's, let's look at the trigger once node. So trigger once. So we're gonna connect this node to trigger in and this node to trigger out. All this is gonna do is this is gonna trigger the sound and it's gonna, actually, you know what? Let's use both. Let's trigger both these at the same time. So we're coming out of play into play. So we're gonna trigger the kick and the hi-hat and then the meta sound is gonna stop. Done. Here's why we might wanna use a trigger repeat. Let's say there's a trigger box in your game and it's at a tavern and your player walks in. So it kinda of sounds like a joke. Uh, two Unreal Engine mannequins walk into a, to a bar. <laughs> so they walk into this bar and let's uh, trigger in here. We're gonna create an input called, oops, what did I do? Okay, I don't know what I did, so let me undo that. Uh, we're gonna say, walks into bar, walks into bar, okay? Now when we play this, I cannot spell, okay? W walks <laughs> into bar. You gotta make sure your spelling's good. Spelling and naming convention is very important. Okay, so we are now, we got our meta sound playing, but we haven't triggered this. Let's trigger it now. So this is gonna simulate, this is gonna simulate a player walking in. That's walking in. But let's say he walks out real quick and walks back in. It's not doing anything. Because if this was an ambient noise bed, let's say this is, let's change this to music. Or let's change this to our loop. Where's our loop at? Let's change this to our groove loop. Now, and let's loop this. So when we walk into the bar, man, I really can't spell, I made that a big A. Okay. I apologize to everyone watching this. I am, there we go, all right. Oh my gosh, you can't do that while it's running. Okay, there we go. Okay, for real. So, meta sounds playing. Let's assume the meta sounds playing. Uh, we walk into a bar. Now it's looping. Now what if we walk into the bar again? nothing happens. We don't want it to happen because it could just create a cluster of sounds. So let's make a reset though. Let's call this walks out of bar. So now when we're playing it and we trigger this and we walk back in, it doesn't trigger. Well, when we walk out of it, it will reset it. Now we also want to bring this here and stop that. So let's do this. So when we're in here, okay, it's rocking, it's rocking. Let's say the player walks out of the bar for more than five seconds. Then we stop that sound and reset that trigger. And then if they walk back in, now the trigger's open again. So this is a powerful feature of the trigger box. This could also be used for, maybe you wanna trigger a loop but then once you trigger it, you don't want to trigger it again, you just want that to loop, but maybe uh, another snare drum sound turns that loop off 
and then resets that trigger so that on another loop it can restart that trigger. So you can get in some pretty intense logic. So the trigger once node is pretty powerful. Let's talk about another one, maybe one of my favorites, and let's get rid of these inputs so we don't need these. Okay, cool. We don't need any of these. Okay, so let's talk about the trigger repeat. This is a really important feature. And then let's bring in an on play. So now what this is gonna do, this is going to trigger over and over and over again for this amount of time in seconds. So let's say 0.5, which is half a second. So now when I hit play, it's triggering both these sounds at this rate. What's cool here is now I can come out of here and remember this period is a amount of time. This period of time is awesome, but in a musical sense, it'd be better to have a musical meter and not time, but BPM. Fortunately, Epic came up with this BPM to seconds node, which is, I think, the single greatest, most powerful node in all of the meta sounds. What this does is it allows you to set the tempo. So we're dividing the measure into four beats. So if I do a beat multiplier of four, that means every four beats, it's gonna trigger this sound. So let's listen to that. And I know that this loop groove is 120 BPM because I wrote it in the file and you should also write it in the file too. Anytime you have looped audio, you should write a tempo. So now every bar of four quarter notes, it's gonna re-trigger this. Now this is a two bar loop, so I'm gonna change this to eight. So now it's gonna loop exactly at the end of the beat. Okay. So now if I slowed this down to 80, you're actually gonna hear a gap in the loop because this loop's gonna end before it repeats back. So this is why it's important to know the tempo. Where this comes in handy is this is where we can have some serious fun. Let's kill this node here and let's bring in, we're gonna repeat this one too. So now we're gonna repeat them both. Let's change this to a snare drum sound actually. And I'll show you why in a second. Okay, so now. So this is triggering this every two bars. But here's where things get cool. I wanna talk about the trigger delay. Trigger delay because what the trigger delay does is it offsets the timing of this trigger by however much time. If we take another BPM node, let's copy this, and let's bring this down here. And we're gonna send this to the time that it's gonna delay, but I actually only wanna delay this by two beats. So now you're gonna hear the loop start and then the, the snare is gonna trigger exactly two beats behind it. And then every time this triggers, it's gonna trigger this two beats behind it. So essentially what we're doing is we're making a groove. So let's actually change this to a kick sound. So now, So essentially what we're doing now is we're making a rhythm out of it. Now I want to repeat this. Let's repeat this every measure. And you're probably thinking to yourself, this is so basic. Why would I ever want to do that? But you got to remember, meta sounds is not it's a way of thinking, it's a way of looking towards the future and going, what can I do with this? Because if I can do this, this quickly and this basically with just some simple math, what could I do with some complex math? What could I do with some uh, other algorithms or some sine waves, which we'll talk about uh, in some future videos? What could I do with, what if I layered more audio? So if you wanna check out my uh, video on the ambient horror track that I did in Metasounds, this is kind of conceptually the same principle. It's just, you know, 
to the nth degree. And as we build these sounds, we can get more and more and more complicated. For example, we could go off of this and we could create another trigger repeat. We could have this feed a trigger repeat that's gonna repeat it more often. And so you can kind of see where this is going. Then you can use also other things to trigger other things. This is just a really basic way to do it. Um, so there's a lot of power in just the concept of triggering. Maybe we wanted to change this to a quarter note. So we're gonna, that's gonna actually change the rhythm that it plays. Right? Um, let's say we wanted to change this to two beats. So basically just made kind of like a boom chuck. And now keep in mind, because this is in time, we could add another wave player over this and we could have a loop playing over top of it. You know, one of the things I like to do is just pull in like an ambient layer and have an ambient layer going on top of things. So there's so many things that you can do with this. Uh, I hope this is, is kind of helping. Uh, if this is the first time watching this, make sure you go back and watch part one and part two. In part four, we're gonna continue to expand on this concept and do even some more com more complex things as well. Maybe look at some envelopes uh, and then eventually look at the sign generation and the oscillation generators and stuff like that. So make sure you subscribe, like my channel. We'll see you in the next video.